Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome on in to ClayShare Live. I'm Jessica Putnam Phillips, and tonight we are going to be making pressed hex plates. That's right. We're going to be pressing hexagon shaped slabs of clay into foam and making plate. Pretty simple, pretty easy, really fun, and there is limitless opportunities for texture and surface decoration, glaze tests, clay tests, all kinds of things you can do with these. They're fast, they're fun, they're easy, um, and you can make them bigger if you want. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Now we're gonna be live on the ClayShare app, ClayShare.com, on my YouTube channel, which is Jessica Putnam Phillips. If you're not following me on YouTube, go subscribe. Also on Vimeo.com and on my ClayShare Instagram channel. Of course, you get the best view on Facebook and ClayShare and YouTube, but Instagram's great too. We love our Instagram family. So, um, gonna make these plates. I'm gonna be using some Laguna B-Mix 5 No Grog Stoneware. Not a sponsor. I do love Laguna Company's clays. They are not a sponsor of ClayShare. So use whatever clay you want. I just happen to really love Laguna's B-Mix 5. It's a mid-range stoneware, cone five, as it says in the name. You can take it to cone six. Don't go higher than that. You can run into some trouble, but it's this beautiful, lovely cream colored stoneware. So if you like a lovely light clay, this one is the perfect one for you. It takes glazes really well. It's very bright and it just works for me. So I think it'll work for you all. Hey, Bettina, thanks for, thanks for tuning in. I've got my Clay Share Clay with Kindness t-shirt. You can get this on claysharemarket.com if you want to get yourself a Clay with Kindness shirt. Um, ladies, yeah, it's not a, on guys. You get this lovely, perfect square. On ladies, you get a trapezoid shape. I don't know, a rhombus. I don't do geography, ge geometry. Thank you. <laughs> Poor Kevin is dying now. <laughs> I don't do geometry. I knew I'd get there. Oh, so last week we made lemon plates in prime time. And those of you who missed that, I did a show and tell Monday morning and I also posted some kiln openings, but I thought I would show you the cute little lemon plates. Now this is the spotted lemon plate we did. And you can see that it's just a sweet little spotted plate, yellow background. I love it. And then the next one, you know I'm on camera three there, mm -hmm. overhead, okay. <laughs> and so the next one I did was the one we actually did live in the broadcast, which was the medium size lemon plate, clear background. So can you see the difference? This is a yellow background, this one has a clear background. Very similar. And then the bigger plate that I had done a little earlier. So they all basically came out the same except for the one with the yellow background. They look great, they are food safe, they have been through the dishwasher, they've already been used. People in my house ran off with them, I had to hunt them down before the broadcast today. I'm like, hey, let's share the lemon plates tonight. They're gone, they're just gone. People in my life just take my plates and go. So, uh, but I got them back. <laughs> but I'll probably never see them again. <laughs> so Terry says she doesn't do either geometry or geography. Um, I don't mind geography. I think it's really interesting, but um, yeah, we'll just leave all those things alone for tonight and we'll make pots. <laughs> so the lemon plate, if you want to watch that, that was during our private broadcast for premium members. That was last Wednesday night. It's up on ClayShare and on the ClayShare app. You can watch that. And then the mandala plates, you know, we made these, this was a class we did, little dot mandala plates, so fun. And I just love to use these small hex plates for that. So Nancy's saying hi, and she hopes the internet stays up for they're having severe thunderstorms. Us too, we just had lightning and thunderstorms run through. Um, it's still about 110 degrees in the studio here. That is why I do not have an apron on, because I'm melting. No AC, because it's Vermont. That's how we roll, apparently. But um, we're going to keep going as long as we don't lose power. <laughs> I see all the people, geology, geography, geometry, all those big G words. We don't have to worry about that. So got a bunch of different little hex plates I did for surface decoration. If you want to test out textures, here's some that I did. You know, this one here was with a homemade stamp. And then I just filled it with black underglaze to see what would happen. 
This one here was actually done with plastic chicken fencing. So if you have chickens in your life and you make their, their own fencing, guess what? Save some of it. Save a little chunk. Cut it off because you can make your own great texture with chicken fencing. It's plastic, not metal. The metal will cut right through. And then this one right here is made from these little rubber mats. They are, I got from a teacher supply, they are SAX, S-A-X, texture mats. They're thin little rubber mats. They're usually used in printmaking, but I love to press them in clay. When I teach workshops, I take these with me because they're small, they're lightweight, they're easy to travel with. I love rolling pins, who doesn't? But when I'm going to teach a workshop and I can only take so many bags with me and I'm gonna have 20 students that need to add texture and they don't want the same, I cannot pack 20 rolling pins. But I certainly, hold on, I got more, certainly can pack a whole bunch of these guys into my suitcase and everybody can play with different arrangements and have fun with texture. So these little guys, um, I don't have a source for them. If you're really interested in them, I'll find out uh, just Saks Texture Mat. Are you in the overhead still? Go yeah, go to the overhead. Can you all see that? Saks, like saxophone, S-A-X, saxophone. So they are great. Ooh, this is a good one too. We might play with some of these tonight so you can see the textures. They have different sizes and everything and um, they're really great. So the other thing I love to do with these plates is I like to do glaze tests because this is the new Mako Stoneware Cenote that just came out. Oh, I love this glaze. Yes, it's food safe. It means you can use it on dinnerware. It can go on the dishwasher. This little one here has and it, it's just fabulous. So you can see the Cenote. You can see I like blues, right? Blues and greens. It's kind of a thing going on. So uh, Charlotte got some of these on Amazon. All right. I'll see if I can add them to the Clay Share Amazon shop. Um, and we'll get those out there so you guys can get these. I have three different sizes that I bought. Um, they're just really fun. They're just really fun. All right, want to make a plate? Yeah. Do you want to make some plates? They are probably, they are cheaper than rolling pins. Yes, they are. They, when you look at them, they're kind of pricey. I think it's like a pack of this many was $25, I want to say. Um, but, you know, you arrange them. And, you know, I love to quilt on clay, right? So for me, this is a great way that I can use a bunch of these. And if I want to roll texture on one section, I can still use these too and play with texture. All right, so we're going to go ahead and make our plates. Now, if you want to roll out your slab on a slab roller, if you have one, go ahead and do that. Make it about a quarter of an inch thick. Little, if you're going to put texture in, if not, make it a little thinner. My slab roller is currently covered with the whole week's worth of projects. So, um, yeah, we're not using the slab roller today. That's the downside for having a gigantic slab roller. It becomes that stuff collects on. Cenote is lovely. It reminds you of the 60s colors and textures. It, it really has a vintage quality to it, like a throwback. And it's just, and, and it's kind of natural too, like stone and it has, it, I just, I love it. All right, so I just cut off a couple pounds of clay from my bag. And I'm gonna go ahead and roll this yarn, the overhead. All right, making sure, making sure. So I just cut a hunk off, and then I'm gonna use my rolling pin. I actually have another one without the handles somewhere that I use to, to bash my clay down, but it's somewhere. So I'm just gonna hold on while I do this. So if you find your clay is really hard when you go to work with it, sometimes just doing this will really soften up the particles in the clay and make it more flexible. So if you find that your clay is a bit stiff, this can help it. And as I'm hitting the clay, do you see I'm twisting my hand? I'm doing this motion here. Because I don't want it to stick. I'm just trying to pound it flat a bit. And now you could do what's called throwing your slab, where you just throw it. 
and rotate it and throw. And this is a great way to make a slab if you don't have a slab roller or a rolling pin. Or you just roll it and just keep turning as you roll. And we'll flip it over. And we're going to roll it down to about one quarter of an inch. But if you want to put texture in it, make sure it's, it's thick enough for that. If not, you can go thinner. Mako has texture mats too. Oh yeah, and if we want to talk about texture mats, one of my favorite companies is Marvelous Molds for texture mats. They've sponsored us in the past. I think we still have a discount code for Marvelous Molds. But if you want a rock texture, oh goodness me, they have this rock texture. This one is like a little quilted one. I use this one a lot. The only drawback for the Marvelous Molds texture mats is they are this size, like that's it. And I want, you know, sometimes you want a bigger mat. Um, so I've got some great silicone fondant mats on Amazon that I put in the clay share shop that I love. Uh, of course, you can make your own rolling pin out of texture. Here's a cute flower one. Maybe we'll do something with that in a minute. All right, I'm gonna make a plate. It's gonna be pretty quick. So get ready, because here it goes. We're just going to go ahead and smooth out both sides with this yellow rib. This is a Cheryl Mud Tools rib. The yellow one is their number four, I believe. Let me double check. Nope, their number three. The yellow number three. That's the one I'm using. And it's my go-to for smoothing out clay. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you is this one was on B-Mix. But this one was on Laguna 60, which is a speckled clay. So let me put that up there, and you can see the difference in the clays right there. I'll let you folks see it, too. See, we got that speckled clay. So look at the difference. See if I have one that's just with the chun. I don't have one right here with the same glaze. But you can still see the speckles. And this is my chun blue is the glaze. So you have this like light blue, opaly glaze, specks coming through. And then I did black underclays and wiped back so that it would have that texture in there. Okay, I'm going to use Jarrah Pottery Forms. I have their hex set that they make. It's a set of four hexagon forms. If I can get this one up here, it's off to the side. So it's a set of four hexagon forms. And I use these more than probably any other because I really love the hexagon shape. They have lots of different shapes. So it's just whatever you like. I'm going to be using these. Now, if you don't want to buy these, you don't have to, you can go to your hobby store or craft store and you can get those wooden plaques. And you can use a wooden plaque to make a plate. So get a rectangle or a square. I used to use those years and years ago. But now I'm using Jarrah Pottery Forms. So we're going to make one, no texture. We're going to sit the form down and I'm just going to cut around the outside. So this is a pressed plate, not a drape plate, which we do sometimes make. A little different, very similar. You troll places like Bed Bath & Beyond for placemats. Yeah, um, the other week we did double-sided texture and we used placemats from places like Bed Bath & Beyond. Uh, maybe, I'll grab, maybe I'll grab some before all said and done here. So. Once you've cut out your slab, since we're not going to do anything to it, we're just going to leave it like this. If you wanted to take plastic and smooth your edges before you picked it up onto your foam, you could do that. It's entirely up to you. Now, let's, let's talk about what I got for foam here. Well, this, <laughs> this here was a pillow. This particular smaller one was a foam pillow. It was about twice the width, and it was cut in half. I do have a larger one. Sometimes you'll see me using. That was my daughter's toddler mattress, foam toddler mattress. And I cut it up, and I kept it for clay. So if you can't find your child's toddler mattress, or you don't want to take it from them, my child's no longer a toddler, so she, it's not like I stole her bed. But um, you could use upholstery foam. If you go to Joann's Fabrics or any other craft store that sells upholstery foam, or an upholsterer, you'll be able to find it. 
So let's just line up our little hex that we made, our hex slab, and we're just going to press it down and just give it a good wiggle. And then grab a board, because you know you got a board right there. And then you just lift it off and sit it down. And then pull off the GR pottery form. And so you made the plate. You made it. It's done. That's all we got tonight, folks. <laughs> so, and yes, that's Laguna 60. Um, you made a cool rock texture with the rock. Imagine that. I know, crazy. Imagine using a rock to get rock texture. And so Wendy finally found us live to participate in the live tutorial. Yay! Woohoo! So this right here, this plate, this plate, it doesn't have a foot. It's footless. If you want a foot on it, you can put a foot on it. You know, when I'm making lots of little guys like this, I'm not really concerned with making a foot, but I do sometimes make footed small plates, like here, for example. So I do make them small with feet. Usually if I put feet on them, I put a bigger rim. So we can talk about the differences in these two plates. I use the same size, size form right here. This form made this plate, this form made this plate. This was a press plate, this was a draped plate. So that's the only difference we got going here. When I drape them, I'm, I'm able to smooth that edge and then cut a little bigger rim, and then I put my foot ring on it. So that's when we do drape plates. So let's make a little bit bigger one. And actually, let's do one with texture. We'll do, we'll do a couple. We'll do a bunch. We'll do a bunch. So we have enough clay. Uh, you want to do a bigger one? You want to do this size? It's the same exact thing. You just go ahead cut out around the sides. I am using a Dolan 220S clay knife. The reason I like a knife over a needle or pin tool is that for this type of cutting, needle and pin tools tend to tear the clay. A knife will cut the clay. And I would rather have it cut, not torn. So you went to Salvation Army bought a used footstool, nice size foam. It was $12. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. So the next size up, what I love about this is any form you use, if it has a straight side, you can cut out and then press. Now, I could cut the bigger size out and press in the smaller one, right? So that I could get a big rim on it or I could just go ahead and use the same size. So I have been making plates this way for about, well now it's almost 12 years. I have a few of those older plates. Um, they're not bad. I'm looking, at, I had one just earlier today, I had one. Um, they're not bad. But I do prefer the GR Pottery forms because they're meant for this. The wooden plaques are not, but I have to tell you for many years I used them. All right, so we'll pull this one off. Just joining from steamy Hudson Valley. Karen, Karen, I hear you. It's steamy here as well. So look at this sweet set we just did. Now we've got a big and a small one. And I mean, you can press plates. I have pressed plates that are 15 inches in diameter. Yeah, it's crazy. Don't do that now. Do a drape plate. But I used to press all my things. I don't know why I was pressing. 15 inch plates, that's insane because there's a lot of rim issues and warping that comes along when you press them when they get that big. You don't want to press any bigger than I would say about a 10 to 12 inch at the biggest. Um, don't press anything bigger than that. I, honestly, I do drape for most big things. All right, so we got a couple cute plates. Let's set them to the side and let's do another slab. So you have a hard time centering them to press, Patty. So let me talk about that when we do the next one. Let's go ahead and get more clay and we'll do another one and we'll work through that together so I can answer. It's like magic, exactly. Oh, thank you for stopping by. I love it. Marissa, my hands are healing very well. I'm not throwing yet. 
uh, but every day they get closer. The pain is much less. You know, just the after surgery pain is all I have. I don't have carpal tunnel pain anymore, which is lovely. But I don't have my strength quite yet, but it gets better every day. I'm doing my physical therapy. I'm taking care of them, so I'll get there. I'm figuring another month I'll be throwing. And did you notice I didn't roll out my clay with thickness strips? You really don't need them, although they're, they're handy. They really are. And if you're very precise and it has to be done a certain way, then maybe you want to use them. But the key to having a nice even slab is, you notice how I'm not rolling off this edge here. Turn, roll, stop before the edge. Turn, roll, stop before the edge. Turn and roll, stopping again before the edge. You get it, right? Turn, roll, stop before the edge. If we were at a concert here, you all would scream that out. Stop before the edge. That's right. Now, I need to go this way a little more because I, I need to have some clay. And do you see how even this is? I'm going to hold it up to the camera so you guys can see. I would say you could measure that, and it's within a like, fraction of a millimeter thickness-wise, one side to the other. If you roll enough slabs, you'll be able to do that. Just keep making slabs, right? Hello from Tampa. Hope you're staying cool down there. All right, smoothing out both sides again, just like we did before. And I thought, oh, I'll do some texture. Why not? So I'm just going to make a mark with my finger. No need to texture an area that I'm not going to be using right now, right? So in there. What do you guys want? You want me to use these sacks? Sacks mats? Ooh, that's kind of a speckly rock one. There are some crazy gorgeous ones in here. Ooh. All right, we'll do this flower. This flower, let's see if that's gonna cover the whole thing. See, I'm gonna show you how I quilt with clay. It wasn't even gonna be part of the tutorial. And then I need my little, little littles. Do I want that one in there? that one in there. So I've got three different texture mats in here. Just laid them on and then we're just going to roll it in. And I usually just do one roll. Woo! Yay! Look at that. Can you see that? Can you guys see that texture? Yeah! Look at that. Uh, you see how fast that was and how easy that was to make. They're not big. They're skinny little things, and I love them because of it. Um, yeah, I don't know if I've shared those in ages on here. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and cut. I kind of hate wasting any of that great texture, but the good news is I'm going to be able to do it again because it's a mat that I can reuse a bismillion times. I mean, these, everybody's used these. Kids, veterans, people who've never made clay before. Possibly my mom. Mom, have you used those yet? Look how beautiful. I gotta, I gotta show it close. I don't think you can really appreciate how great these are. They inspire me, because I'm like, I wanna make that pattern. All right, this is my favorite part. So many times I'll put videos up, Instagram, Facebook, wherever, and people will say, that's a lie, the texture will be gone. Like, that won't stay, it's fake. I'm like, it's not fake, it's not fake. Hello, there's texture here, it stays. All right, so we're gonna line this up and we're gonna address the issue of having it centered. So you're gonna place this on, right here, 
And on this side, I can't see this side, right? I can't see the other side of what I'm working on because I'm on this side. So I'm just going to make sure this side right here is lined up. And if these, this side is completely aligned, the other side should be, but you can turn it, you see? And you can turn it. The other thing you can do, and I'm going to get my head in the way of, of the overhead, so um, I need to switch to the front camera for a second, is you can do this, where you look right down, looking down directly onto the center. And if you cannot see the clay sticking out, then it's centered. OK, back to the overhead. Sad texture mats. <laughs> S-A-X, sax. We should say saxophone texture mats. All right, we're going to press it, rock it a bit, and then get another board because you used up the other one. And then transfer it. I do not take it off. Did you notice how I left the clay on the form as I moved the whole thing off? I do not remove the form and then try to move my clay. The only thing supporting the clay right now is this form. If I try to move it by itself, it's going to wiggle and wobble, and that's what causes warping and firing. You know, clay has a memory, and it will remember how you treat it. All right. Still see that texture? Hmm. Still there. Still there. So if I wanted to put feet on one, we could put feet on one. Want to put feet on one? Yay! Okay, we'll do it. You love in the texture. Yeah, these are fun. Do I need to put plastic on the clay first? Nope. No, I don't. Um, tell me, Debbie, who told you you have to put plastic on your clay? Maybe I can help you <laughs> learn something, save you some time, is all I'm about. This clay I rolled out. You saw it just now from the bag. Like, I just took it out of the bag. I rolled it. And I'm working with it immediately. I'm not letting it set or anything. Um, you know, we can use a homemade texture roller for texture. So why don't we do that now? This is where you need to have it thicker because I need to press harder with this than I rolled with this here. Oh man, but that's awesome too. Ah, I need to make, I need to make a couple more plates. All right, we're gonna just use this and we're gonna quickly roll this in clay. This is a homemade texture roller that I made. Very simple. I made the roller using stamps that I made and um, very similar to ones I've taught you all how to make. Your teacher. Um, I'm sure your teacher's awesome, uh, but they don't have to put plastic on the clay if they, if you, you don't have to if you don't want to. The only time I, so when I roll out a slab, and I can't work with all of it right away, I will layer it between sheets of clay. That way it doesn't dry out on me while I'm getting to the point where I can work with it. But if it's something I'm going to work with right away, then no, I don't use it. But is there anything wrong with putting it between plastic? Look, if it's been working for you and you like it, you do it. I mean, that's kind of how I am about things. If it works for you, then you do it. All right, so I'm just making sure my alignment is good. And then I'm just going to press a little, little bit of a rock. OK, remember, we're not going to take the form off. Leave it on the form. I'm going to sit it over here. Sorry, my board was off to the side. So we left it on the form. Now lift the form off, still have our texture. Let's, let's do one more. Let's quickly do one more. And then maybe we'll have time for feet. So, this past month, June, we had a lot happen. We had Clay Share's fourth anniversary, well, our birthday, and we had Clay Share Day, which was a full day of demos and discounts and deals and giveaways and all kinds of awesomeness. We had Lee Pollard join us from the Great Pottery Throwdown, and you can watch all of that for free on ClayShare.com and on the ClayShare app. So you guys can check that out if you want to. You know, the other thing we had is last week we had Bead Week, and we made all kinds of beads. If you like the earrings I'm making, I'm wearing, you can learn to make some like this in my earring class. So there's lots of stuff there. 
We have business of pottery classes we're working on right now for those of you who have been making pottery for a little while and starting to pile up on the shelves and you need to do something with it. Well, knowing how to start your own business, that's a very handy thing. So we're working on that. We'll have a new class coming out very soon, within the next week. And then I have some more hand building classes coming. There will be more wheel throwing as soon as my hands will let me. Although we do have some workshops coming up that are wheel throwing and we'll be putting those up on clay share as well. All right, so we're gonna do one because I can't stand it. I need to use some more of these textures. Clay share day was awesome. Yeah, Ali Pollard was so awesome. He made me cry, he made you all cry. Um, so great, so, so great. So I, you know I'm not using thickness strips. Yep, and I'm rolling out to approximately one quarter of an inch. And because I've been doing this for over 20 years, for me, I can look at it and I know this thickness. But you, if you're just starting and you wanna make sure it is one quarter of an inch thick, go ahead and grab a ruler and measure. Don't, you know, never be afraid to check. Never be afraid. All right, so we've got both sides smoothed out. And there is, I, lo I love this. So I just wanna put that there. So there's one, you're not gonna, you have to wait to see it. Oh, that's a good one too. Darn it, why are they so good? Just pick any three random ones. I, I can't look, I can't keep looking because there's too many good ones on here. So what makes me decide whether I wanna make a pressed plate versus a draped plate. Well, it always comes down to one, the size, how big of a rim I want, you know, bigger rim plates. You know what, I think we're gonna be crazy, hold on. Yep, we got enough clay, we're gonna do a big one. So it depends on the rim size, right? So if I'm gonna do something with a really big rim, I definitely wanna do a draped plate. If I wanna make trinket dishes, um, little soap dishes, these kind of small plates like this, and I'm not interested really in putting a foot on it, then I'll pretty much just do a draped plate. We're gonna scooch this here, put this one here. See how I'm, I'm not even looking, I don't know what these textures are. So um, they have so many great patterns you could, you know, Pay attention to what ones you're using and make a, a certain theme if you want to. Ooh, what is that one? Let's put that one on there. All right, okay, it's all covered. Let's go, I'm rolling. I'm just walking this rolling pin across my clay. I'm gonna come back and walk it over here because I don't think it got these. We'll go down here. So I'm a big fan of no rules, and you know there's a way to make things, but there's no right way to make things. So you can try lots of different things. Most people will be like, don't roll over again, but I do. Wanna see it? Yes, all right. All right, let's check it out. Whoa, oh my goodness gracious, look at this. So uh, that's some, that's some sweet texture on there. Can you all see that? Putting plastic on your clay depends on the climate. So I think for me, Joanne, if I'm gonna roll out a slab even here and I'm not gonna use it immediately, I will put plastic on it. But I never roll out a slab, put plastic on it, and then take it immediately out of the plastic. That, that I, I think that's what I interpreted that question to be. If I was rolling out a slab and I wasn't gonna use it right away, yes. Oh, so now we have this difficult choice. Can I get two of these? No. Darn it. I, this texture's awesome, but it's not gonna get into this. Sorry. Although I can use this scrap clay and cut out Hello, cannoli bead makers. 
uh, we could probably get some cannoli beads. If you were making my cannoli beads and looking for some great textures for those cannoli beads, you would love these mats. I gotta get, I don't know if Saks is like a company I can reach out to and be like, hey, come be a Clay Share sponsor. Give everybody a discount. So we have our, yeah, I know. I just want, I, whatever, I'm wedging it up. I know I could have saved it. All right, let's take this here. Now, going back to the question about a drape versus a press plate. If I want to use this size here, I'm going to do a pressed plate. If I want to use this size here, most likely I'm going to do it as a draped plate. Not saying you cannot press this because you can, but it's more prone to sagging. Now, in a lot of my classes, I will tell you, wait until your clay holds itself up a tiny bit and doesn't just flop right back down for bigger press plates. The issue with that is if you wait too long, you get cracking. So I have discovered that to make life easier, if I'm not using the clay right away, I do a draped plate. So, so the clay I'm using is similar to porcelain. Yeah, it's a porcelainous stoneware. It basically behaves just like porcelain. So if you use porcelain, um, you know, you would really like B mix. It's a little warmer, creamier. Some people say it's more user friendly. Tiny bit, a little bit less like marsh mar marshmallow fluff, but not too much. All right, that looks good. We're gonna press. Ready to press? Just do a little rocking, and then lift the whole thing up onto your board. If for any reason at all in the transference, you have a bit come like flop out a little bit, just press it back against the form. Let's pull that off. And so we have this gorgeous plate. Show the folks on Instagram. Show you guys, look at that texture. Could have pressed a little harder. Um, maybe, actually no, that looks good. That looks good, but look at all the different textures we had on there. So lots of fun can be had uh, with texture, without texture, doesn't matter. Now, I had a few people ask me when I announced I was doing this class, if I would talk about finishing the edge, because they don't want the edge to look like a slab edge. I'm okay with the edge looking like a slab edge. I made the plate from a slab. That's the process. That's the way it was made. So to me, it's an honest plate. I am not trying to fool anybody to think the plate was made any other way than a slab was rolled out and it was pressed. So for me, it's an honest edge. Not saying it's a lie to smooth it and make it look like it maybe wasn't a slab, but I don't feel that you should have any shame about having a slab looking edge. There's nothing at all to have shame about. So this is one I made a couple hours ago, eh, maybe in, geez, maybe an hour ago, maybe. So you have a couple options for your edge here. And do you want me to zoom in on the overhead? Yeah, I want you guys to be able to see this. Yeah, uh, hold on a second. I don't have anybody doing my camera for me. It's me. All right, let's get this to focus. Nope, it's doing movie mode. It won't focus for me, Kev. It's, it's, it's autofocus. It's autofocus. Ha! Yeah. Huh, it's autofocus. Okay, so you have a couple options. Um, let's look at my finished plates. We look at these edges. I mean, that's a. I don't know. I think it looks like a great plate edge. Now I do finish them. I don't leave them raw like they are. I do smooth them out. So you got a couple options. If you want a harsh straight edge, and it's not really even harsh, it just gives you something that the clay can break over, you can use this rib and you can just smooth them so you really get a very flat edge there. Nice and flat on an angle, but flat still. And then it's done, you just wipe off any burrs or little bits of clay. All right, but you still have that sharper edge that definitely um, is more slabby. So make yourself your sponge taco, where you roll your sponge into a little taco, a tiny taco, and you're gonna put your clay in here like this. And you're just gonna pull it across your clay 
If you are using a groggy clay, you will want to use a white Cheryl Mud Tool sponge because those are magnificent. So I'm only going to do this side and then take your finger in this pinching motion like this and just drag that along the edge. And that completely softens the edge. And let me show you the difference between the two. So for me, this edge that I just did, the second one that I'm showing you here, that's how I usually do my edges. Let me grab another board, if I can find another board. <laughs> we'll use a GR Pottery form. Okay, so I can show you above there. This is my finished smooth off edge right here. This is the edge I left. Can you tell the difference between these two edges? So, you know, this is fine, but this is finished. Let me show Instagram folks. See, this side's finished. This one's not, see? We have these bumps, we have uneven bits, we have a little roughness at the top. Now I just need to bisque texture plates, glaze them with cenote, and then drizzle the edge with some light flux. That's all, that's all. Now another option um, is you can, if you have extras of these, cut them in half, right? Jeff at GR Pottery Form sells these already cut so you don't have to be the cutter. And you can use this, it works best on a footed plate, but you use this and you smooth your edge with this. Of course, you can make a tool like this. I mean, it's a little bit of a half circle. You, you can make that with so many things. So you could use that. I personally, I'm the, I'm the taco girl. I love me some tacos. So my sponge taco, Many of my students will <laughs> be familiar with that term. You just smooth it out and then go back over with your pinched fingers. It's done. It's a done plate. Like that's it. Uh, it just needs to dry and get bis fired and it's finished. And there's, there's really nothing else to do to it. I mean, you could put, we could have put a foot on it if we wanted to. What do we have for time? Do I have time to make one more? Yeah. Yeah. So what types of glazes do I use? Do you have to use celadons to make it work? Absolutely not. So cenote is not a celadon. That's just a, just a really gorgeous stoneware glaze. This is a stroke and coat. This is also a stroke and coat. This is a stroke and coat in white. Um, you can use any glaze you want. Now, if you are adding texture, well, you have to think about what we're doing when we're adding texture. We're adding depth in our clay, and the only way that's going to show is if whatever glaze material you use, it's a glaze that is transparent or translucent. You need to be able to see through it, right? See through it to the texture. If you use an opaque glaze, it's going to completely hide. So cenote, as awesome as it is, if I put that on a highly textured piece, it's going to obscure the texture. This will work on big textures, like if you do vertical carving, like stripes or something, but it's not going to show the texture of these plates we just made. This texture will be obscured and gone. So something like this, you want to use either an underglaze after it's bis fired to stain it, then a clear or celadon glaze on top, right? Or you use something like pigments or oxides and then a glaze you can go to a semi-opaque glaze if you do that. And if you don't put texture in at all, guess what? You do, you do whatever you want then. You can use any glaze, just like I did here with that cenote. I didn't use, I didn't use a translucent glaze at all. Now people are talking about eating tacos. That is not fair. <laughs> Jeff at GR says that a plate without a foot is like feet without shoes. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I like me some footed plates, these plates right here. So let's just look at plates, right? So these here that I made are all footed. These are not footed. So do I have the other one of this? I do. Let's, let's just talk. I, I love all pots. I love pots in general, 
I do not pick favorites. So if we have footed pots or unfooted pots, it doesn't matter. But when I'm making small trinket dishes, I want to show you on the front camera something. Beautiful, elegant, elevated footed plates right here. They're gorgeous, aren't they? Sweet little pressed dishes without feet. Let's look at our cabinet situation. So how much cabinet space you have, right? They, mm, these three plates take up less space than this one plate in your cabinet. So you got things to consider. I'm not saying one is better than the other. I almost always put feet on my plates, but to each their own. And as you can see, I love them with feet. I love them without, oh wait, three plates without feet, right? They have pretty big rims too. So not, not too much of a difference, honestly, not too much. So it's entirely up to you. Put a foot, don't put a foot, whatever. That's what it is with pottery. You make, to make what you want. So you looked online for the Saks texture mats on Amazon and they are unavailable. Um, there is a teacher's specialty supply store that, oh man, did I order these from there? These, they don't have their marking on it. Um, any of you out there who are teachers, you might know what I'm referring to. And if I can find where I got them from, I've had them for a very, very long time. So I honestly, I don't know if where I got them you can even get them from. So how to find the clay share shop on Amazon. You cannot find it just by going to Amazon and looking for clay share, that'll get you nothing. You have to put in and you have to type yourself in to your web browser, amazon.com slash shop slash clay share. It's the only way to get to it. Uh, you would think Amazon would want to make it easier because they're selling stuff and then people can buy their stuff, but apparently not. They do what they want over there. That's because everybody just bought them after I mentioned them. Maybe I should become a dealer in Saks texture mats. A Saks dealer. Saks texture dealer. I'll look into that. Uh, actually, I will look into that. See if I can become a supplier. As many of you know, I made the announcement that I am going to be making my own wooden rolling pins in-house. We are branching out and we're going to start making clay share rolling pins. So all of my gorgeous designs are going to be available, not just in large rolling pins, but smaller hand size, little four inches and such rolling pins. And there'll be a lots of new designs. So I'm really excited for that. And those will be coming end of summer because, you know, I have to wait for machinery and supplies to get here. So if I'm going to be selling rolling pins, why not sell texture mats too? Oh, uh, why not? Gee whiz, let's use these. What do you think? City Block Art Supplies? Dick Blick has them a distributor. I know, I'm, I'm not opposed to the idea. All right, so this is a Marvelous Mold mat. Marvelous Molds are so yummy, so yummy, because they make flawless texture and very, very good impressions. You know how I am about making good impressions, right? Look at this texture. Let's do, let's do one more strip. One more there. And I'm using a rolling pin to roll this in. You could use a brayer if you'd rather. Look at that. So I'm coming up. That's crazy good. Weight of yumminess. So you've always gotten the mats at High Water Clay and Clear Water, Florida. Thank you, Karen. Yeah, you folks, try, try there. All right, so we got that. That'll make, no, oh, will it make a big one though? Mm. No, I didn't roll it out correctly for that. I rolled it out for a little one, but I can make more. 
So we'll cut this little guy out, and I think I'm going to be out of time. So next, at 6.15 p.m., we are doing our primetime broadcast for premium members of ClayShare. And in that, we are going to have our June challenge wrap up. And I'll, I'll give you all a preview of the July challenge that goes up officially tomorrow, but I'll, I'll let you guys know a little early. And then I'm going to be making a circle basket, never before seen, ever. So it's a brand new surprise thing, and we're going to be doing that together in a few more minutes. So that's what's happening. Next week, I'm going to be making pots. Surprise! I'm making pots next week. Okay. It's not a surprise. <laughs> I make pots every week. Um, I'm going to be making pots using Sam Bao's brand new underglaze decals. And so the only thing that's a little irksome with the Marvelous Molds is I can see the seam where the mats overlap there. So you just go in with your finger and you just smooth those out. And it gets rid of it. And it just goes. And once it's glazed, once it's glazed, it's going to be amazing. I got a little more clay. Yeah, I love it. I love that texture. Um, a little more clay. Not enough for that one. Let's do something crazy. I got this little strip. Let's roll, let's roll this strip on top of the other texture. See if I can do it without destroying the first texture. What do you think? Think it worked? Oh, wow. Surprise. <laughs> it worked. So now I have a band of another texture through there. So the big, the big decision now is where to line that up. I'm going to do that there. And then we cut. And all the clay, that scrap clay, the little bits I'm cutting off, I just go ahead and wedge that right back up. This piece here, you know, I wedged up and rolled out couple times and you just keep doing that until you've used your clay up you don't you don't have to dispose of it and just keep re-wedging over and over and over oh my goodness cutie pie look at that I love it uh, the great thing about these is if you're watching and you've never made anything about pottery before anything with pottery before made any pottery before is you could make these out of air dry clay they won't be food safe but you can make them out of air dry clay if you just want to try it. And, you know, if you're making trinket dishes, they don't have to be food safe, right? You just paint them with an acrylic paint and you're good to go. So a lot of folks might not have kilns and have maybe never made things before out of clay. That's what I was looking for, making things out of clay. Uh, and then this is a great way that you could, could try it. The last plate's texture. See what happens when you play with texture. When you have fun, when you just let yourself explore, right? That's just exploring. That's it. Just keep playing with texture. Now, I did a bunch without texture. I'm going to do stuff to the surface of those, probably carve some of them. But you, you see there's so many things you can do if you just get creative. That one might end up being the best one from the, from the tutorial, right? Could you put texture on texture? Oh, yes, you can. I do it all the time. Yep. You can put texture on texture. Just be aware that your top texture, the second one you put on, could wipe out your first texture. But, yeah, I mean, texture on texture can give some really cool results, especially, here's a little hint. When you're starting, your first texture you put down should be a bigger pattern. Your next texture you put on top of that should be a smaller pattern. So you'll still see the detail from that small pattern because it won't be crushed by the bigger pattern. Does that make sense? So I always go bigger pattern, smaller pattern with that. So there you go. That's what I got for you guys tonight. And so will I put a foot on once they're leather hard? I will not. If I was going to put a foot on, I would do it right now. Don't wait till they're leather hard. Do it now. If I want to do a foot, I mean, do I have time? Oh, man, I got five, five minutes. Five minute foot with Jess. Would you like to do a five minute foot? Say that. Five times fast. Five minute foot, five minute foot, five minute foot. It's not that hard to say. All right, let's do a foot.
I wasn't gonna. You guys asked. Now I'm gonna. So we rolled out the clay. Honestly, wedging is still hard on my hands. But it's getting better. Gone are the days where I'd be wedging like 10 pounds, no problem. So I'm just going to roll a coil quickly. So don't wait on your feet. If you can put them on now, so what I would do is press it, turn it over immediately, and then put a foot on it, and then flip it back over, right? And I took a coil, scooch you over, going to roll my coil flat. Try to keep it even if I can. I just so happen to have a little foot maker friend over here. And if you haven't made yourself a foot maker, check out my free tutorial. Make your own foot maker. Corn cob holder. And away you go. You make a, a foot with it. All right. Let's see. Do you think I have enough clay to make a foot? I think I'll have to roll out some more clay. What is the name of the yellow, of the marvelous mold stamp that I'm using? This little quilted one. Um, I can't remember it right this second. I have to look it up. It's, um, yeah, I'll look it up. So I slipped and scored both sides, and now both the bottom of the little dish and my foot strip that I quickly, you saw how fast I made that foot. So don't, don't think you can't make a foot fast. Fast five minute foot. Fun? I don't know. I'm trying to think of a, another F word that will work into that so we can <laughs> make that great. There we go. So we're going to smooth this over right here. Take our sponge. We're going to do our sponge taco. I know we haven't gone over yet. Oh my gosh, we're close. Sponge taco, just to get that edge smoothed down. I'm going to use my finger on the inside. You can also use your color shaper if you have one handy. Or clay shaper, that's what they're calling them now. Shape your foot to where you want it. That looks pretty good. I think. Works. Got a foot. All right. I'm just going to smooth the edge and let's flip it over. <laughs> Fabulous feet, furiously fast. Fabulous fast, five minute feet. Furiously fast, fabulously flat feet, five minute. I don't know. <laughs> All right, so we're going to flip this over. Usually I'd use two hands, but ta-da, we did a foot in five, less, less than five minutes, like two minutes. There it is. So voila, c'est magnifique. Yeah, it turned out great. All right, Whew. you looked for the Saks texture mats, and they're the same as Mako's. Also, MKM makes rollers that are similar to make mm but less expensive interesting so i wonder if these aren't just mass produced by somebody and you buy them and you put your name on them so if i want to sell them as clay share texture mats but they wouldn't be because i didn't design them so they don't count all right there we have it plate done we made some pressed hex plates plain ones textured ones no feet feet big ones little ones Small ones, tall ones. There you go. All right, everybody. I'll see my premium members in a few more minutes. Everybody else, have a fabulous week. I'll see you next Wednesday. We're going to be using Sam Bow Under Glaze decals, the brand new summer patterns. Woohoo! So come back and check it out. <laughs>